Welcome to the Sermon Audio Podcast with Pastor Paul Pett from Redeemer Lutheran Church. Subscribe to this podcast on your favorite podcast app. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. The text for our message is our Old Testament reading, and I'm going to read just a portion of that one more time. The wilderness and the dry land shall be glad, the desert shall rejoice and blossom like the crocus. It shall blossom abundantly and rejoice with joy and singing. The glory of Lebanon shall be given to it, the majesty of Carmel and Sharon. And the ransomed of the Lord shall return and come to Zion with singing. Everlasting joy shall be upon their heads. They shall obtain gladness and joy, and sorrow and sighing shall flee away. This is our text. Please pray with me. Heavenly Father, we ask, fill us with your spirit. Fill our hearts, fill our minds, fill our souls that we might be renewed, that we might be refreshed, that we might be strengthened again with hope in you, love from you, joy in you, and especially the joy to recognize, to remember, to embrace and, and praise your name for all the gifts you shower upon us, especially the gift of Jesus, our Savior and the salvation he brings. In his name, amen. So, what do God and water have in common? What do God and water have in common? Give me more than one. Okay, I'm coming back to you because that was supposed to be the last one. <laughs> okay. Somebody else said something. I missed it. So he's there. It's refreshing. Pure. Pure. Yep. We're, we're coming back to that one. <laughs> right. Thank you very much. And that's where one of the ones I wanted to go. There are three forms of water, right? Liquid. Solid and ice and yeah. gas and steam, okay? Father, Son, Holy Spirit. And then, how many atoms in one molecule of water? Three. One. One hydrogen. H2O, right? Two of them. Two hydrogen. Two hydrogen. I don't know how to make water. God. Two hydrogen, one oxygen, right? And, and I want you to come back to what we hear both from Dina and from Rachel. Say yours again, Dina, if you remember what you said. Can't have life without both, Rachel. Let's go hand in hand, right? You can't have life without both. And it's life-giving and life-sustaining. And I want us to think about water as we hear when, the way God is speaking through Isaiah. And as we're hearing for, from Isaiah on this, we're given a picture of what to begin with. In this passage, put it up if you would. The wilderness and the dry land shall be glad. The desert shall rejoice and blossom like the crocus. It shall blossom abundantly and rejoice with joy and singing. How is it possible that a desert, Wes, put up the first picture I've got there. This image came to my mind almost instantly as I'm reading this. Anybody have any idea what this is? If you watch the movie Aquaman, where is this? Sahara Desert. In northern Africa, is there any water in this place? No. Is there anything living that you can see in this place? No. Why? Because there's no water. Because there's no water, 
Nothing lives, nothing grows, nothing can survive because there is no water. You need God for that life. You need water for that life. You need water to sustain and to bring life, and none of that is here. And so when you go back to those first verses, why wouldn't there be rejoice, rejoicing if water comes? I've used this in uh, sermons for funerals, and I, I'm going to share it again if you've heard it already. Uh, tough noogies. In uh, Death Valley, the desert outside California, there was a freak weather pattern for 17 days straight they had rain in the desert. And for 17 days straight, that rain continued and continued. And when it stopped, what do you suppose would happen next? Yeah, all of a sudden, the desert floor burst up with plants and following that, wildflowers. All of that, because all of these spores and seeds and everything that had blown into Death Valley and laid their door in years, suddenly had water to not only sprout life, but to grow for a while. And it was amazing, beautiful valley, not of death, but of life. And so there's reason to rejoice. The desert shall rejoice and blossom like the crocus. It shall blossom abundantly. And so with rejoice and with joy and singing. The glory of Lebanon shall be given to it, the majesty of Carmel and Cherub. Now, in ancient times, these were beautiful garden places. Beautiful foliage, beautiful colors. I'm going to share pictures from today. Not of Lebanon, but especially of Carmel. Carmel is a mountain. Sharon is the valley right next to that mountain. This is Mount Carmel today. Filled with life, a beautiful face flip, but covered in green. This is Sharon. Beautiful wildflowers covering the valley below the mountain. And this is the image God wants us to have in our minds. Life that he provides, life that he gives, life that he sustains, life that we rejoice in because God has provided it and he has provided it with abundance. The beauty of that life, every life in God's eyes is like the beauty of every flower of the field. And that's what we need to remember. In God's life, every single life, every single heart, every single soul, every single body, is valuable and important. All the more reason for every Christian to value life as much as God values life. And so as we see these images, we see and rejoice in the glory of God and the beauty that he gives, but he does that not just on the earth, go back if you would. In the scripture reading, where is he doing this? Is this just happening in nature? Is this just happening out in mountains and valleys? Where is this really happening? What's the image that we're supposed to take out of this? Where was the desert? Any ideas? The desert is in every heart, mind, and soul that does not have Jesus Christ. That is the desert. And every heart, mind, and soul that does not have Jesus Christ is a desert. It's lifeless, and it can do nothing, nothing to change its own situation. We look back at the picture of the Sahara Desert. The Sahara Desert could do nothing to change the amount of life that's in it. Nothing. And nor can we do anything to change the situation. But the power of God has every power to make that change. You witnessed it this morning. The power of God came to Oliver. The power of God came to Maverick. The power of God came to Brody. Jesus 
his life, death, and resurrection pour into those three boys. And as that poured into those three boys, God gave them life, spiritual life. And spiritual life now, that needs to be nurtured and cared for and encouraged. The spiritual life that he gives all of us through the water of baptism, through the beauty that that water gives. Go on to the next page. They shall see the glory of the Lord. Faith in every Christian, when you see that faith, God gets the glory for that. So now strengthen the weak hands and make firm the feeble knees. What does that mean? Because we live in a world where there's so much absence of God. Here's what I mean. Just in our own country, less than half, less than half are believers in God, believers in Jesus Christ. Refer to themselves as Christians. Over half refer to themselves as having no faith whatsoever. Lots of empty hearts, lots of empty lives. And what does God want to do? He wants to change that. But in the meantime, it's discouraging for you and me. It's just discouraging when we don't see people know or believe in Jesus Christ. It's discouraging when people don't have faith. It's discouraging when people don't have that life in their life. And so sometimes our hands get a little weak. Nothing I can do about it. What does God want? He says, strengthen those weak hands. Take hold of the gifts that he gives you. Take hold of the gift of life. Take hold of the gift of his love. Take hold of the gift of salvation. Take hold of the gift of all that he gives us by his word, by baptism, by the Lord's Supper. Take hold of all of those, embrace them, and embrace them with all your strength. And make feeble the weak knees. Stand up against those who will stand against God. Stand up against the enemies of sin, death, and the devil. Stand up and stand firmly. Don't let all of this discouraging stuff overwhelm you. And then say to those who have an anxious heart, anybody facing any anxiety recently? Decisions that our, our nation's Congress make disturb me and make me anxious. If you don't know what I'm talking about, come and see me. The one that happened this week. <clears throat> Say to those who have an anxious heart, be strong. Say it with me. Be strong. Fear. Behold your God will come with vengeance with the recompense of God. See peace with that. And so we have reason to rejoice. We don't have to be afraid. We don't have to be overwhelmed. We don't have to think there's no one to help because God's coming to our help. God's coming with life. God's coming with hope. God's coming with love. God's coming to bring us joy. Next slide. Read it with me. Okay. He will come and save you. That's what we need to hear. He is the source of everlasting life. He is the source of our salvation. When John's disciples came to him, why is John disturbed? John's in prison. People who sit in prison often have too much time on their hands to become afraid to begin to doubt, to begin to question, to become anxious. John was a human being. He wasn't God. He was a human being like you and me. You think John faced some fear, some anxiety? You bet he did. Especially if this wasn't the Christ and he's in prison heading for a beheading. But Jesus tells him, Almost the exact same words that God is speaking through Isaiah here. 
The eyes of the blind shall be opened, and the ears of the deaf will stop. Then the layman shall leap like a deer, and the tongue of the mute shall sing for joy. For the waters break forth in the wilderness, and streams in the desert. The burning sand shall become a pool, and a thirsty ground springs of water. If you hear those last verses, what does that sound like to you? Where there's water in the desert, what does that sound like to you? <laughs> I'm going to give you one word to describe it. Where in the desert, where there's water and there's light, what do you call it? An oasis. Picture, if you would. An oasis. And one place. And for us, where's that one place? In the wilderness, filled with hopelessness, filled with lifelessness, filled with with sin, here's that one place that we can go and be sure to have the source of life and hope. Our Savior Jesus Christ and in his house, the church. And that's the one place we can go and we can be sure that he's loving us, he's caring for us, he's sustaining us, he's strengthening us, he's providing us. Go back to the scripture reading again and I want you to hear those words and remember those words. Burning sand shall become a pool, just like the picture. And the thirsty ground springs of water. In the haunt of jackals where they lie down, the grass shall become reeds and roaches, not sand and, and all kinds of terrible things. And a highway shall be there. And it shall be called the way of holiness. The unclean shall not pass over it. Shall bring shall belong to those who walk on the way. Even if they are fools, they shall not go astray. No lions shall be there, nor any ravenous beast. Recently, I talked about predator versus prey. To the devil, we are all prey. God's promise is that there will be no predators. That's what we have to hope in. That's what we have to assure of. We have no fear of anything that can prey upon us because our Lord is with us. Our Lord has given us life. Our Lord has redeemed us. Look at the last part of this verse. The very last part of verse 7 going into verse 10. Are you with me? But the redeemed shall walk there, and the ransom of the Lord shall return. He designs. You are the redeemed. You have been purchased with the blood of Jesus Christ. You are the ransom. He had paid for you in his own life. You are his own. This is, I said it to Oliver, said it to Maverick, said it to Broly. Those three boys, we watched it this morning, but it happened for each and every one of us who believe. We belong to him, and he gives us reason to rejoice. Return to Zion with singing. Everlasting joy shall be on home and home. They shall obtain gladness and joy, and sorrow and sin shall flee away. Rejoice in the Lord always, and say it again. Rejoice in the Lord always, and say it again. Rejoice in the Lord always, and say it again. We rejoice in Jesus. Grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and the love of God and the union of the Spirit be in Bible. Thanks for listening. At Redeemer Lutheran Church, our mission is to share with all people the good news of Jesus Christ, teaching faith and love. Learn more about our ministry at RedeemerLutheranGB.com.